Myth of Empires is an open world survival multiplayer game where we build bases, craft, and lead troops to conquer lands and build our empire. Join me as I spend 100 days in Myth of Empires and see what the game has to offer. So let's begin. Alright, we're starting day one with a heavy rain. I'm not sure this is a good sign or not. But anyways, let's go collect some stuff and do our quest. So the very first thing I did was added some, I'm not sure if you call this skill efficiency points to our lumbering and mining as we had a quest for this. Next, I gathered a bunch of grass because it says collect grass and I guess we'll be crafting a bunch of stuff after we collected about 50 grass. There's so many things about this game that my brain just cannot understand. But anyways, I crafted about 12 rope from the grass I collected. And since I didn't really have anything, I know what to do next. So I just collected more grass. I then showed my masculinity by punching this twig right here. And yes, we got a bark and a branch. Let's go. I then went on a gathering spree for rubble. So I can start crafting some new items like an axe and a hammer. Because in this game, uh, hammers are used to crush rocks, not pickaxe. I don't see any pickaxe yet. So yeah, now I have a hammer. We just need an axe. Well, let's go. With my new stone axe, you don't see me punching twigs anymore. I'm chopping them properly now. And with the hammer, which I miss, I could smash rocks now. The next thing to do was make a campfire. So I crafted myself a campfire and placed one. I then cooked some skewered locusts on the campfire. So we have some food to eat while we gather our resources. I then crafted myself a spear and hunted a tiny rabbit and I only poked it once and I got it. I feel bad now, but it's food. I then crafted myself an armor set so we have armor and so we can hide our dirty briefs. I only needed the helmet and greaves left so we can finish this quest. Let me just say that in this game, a lot of resource gathering is required. Because a lot of items in this game requires a bunch of materials. So yeah, that's what I did. I collected a lot of sticks, a lot of grass, a lot of stones, and crafted a bunch of gears. And here, this is my first encounter with foxes in the game. They were level 8 and level 6, and I was not afraid to fight them. Excellent. Tier 3. Oh my god, the fox. Kinda strong. <laughs> Wait, am I dying? Wait, am I actually dying to foxes? Why can't I hit? Why can't I hit you? <laughs> I'm so... Oh my god, it's so slow when he stabs. Oh, yo, yo, yo. Oh, wait. Oh, that's a male and that's a female. Oh. I, I feel like I'm killing a family here. Oh my god. Yo, you're attacking me because I attacked first. That was my mistake. But if you stop, I will spare you. Oh, never mind. How do I salvage this? Oh, he, he wants revenge. I'm so sorry. I now have crafted myself a bow and arrow. I'm gonna test my skill on this rabbit right here. Let's see if we can kill it. <laughs> One more time. Let's go. See, I'm good at FPS. I can harvest these animal parts with my axe. It took me a while to realize that. So now I had the ability to gather some bones and meat. And as you can see on the top left, if you notice, there's no blue bar. It's my hunger bar and I haven't eaten anything. So this meat was a good source of food. I then crafted myself a wooden shield. Now we can use this to shield ourselves from something. I don't see any human threats yet. So I'm not sure where I can use this. Maybe shielding from fox charges, I guess. I went on and practiced my archery skills once more. <laughs> I'm, I'm pretty sure I aimed correctly. The arrow just missed the rabbit. It was time to make a base. So I crafted myself a bunch of wooden foundations. It looks so cool how they assemble together like this. It, it, it's actually nice to look at when they drop like that and form a platform. So right now, this is my humble base. Just a little piece of wood. And boy, my god, it's so hard to gather material so I can effectively build a base. So I guess not. I'm gonna build a very small base. Not really big, not expansive. Just the right amount of walls and floors so I can put my stations in. Because I swear, I hate gathering materials. 
to make these foundations and walls. So it seems crafting a bed, this is gonna be our respawn point and also our teleport point. So it's a pretty good idea to build a lot of beds randomly, I think. I never really tried utilizing the bed, but that's how I understood when I interact with it. I also placed down a territory flag claiming this land as my own. I then crafted myself a door, but it's not what I expected. I guess I crafted the wrong thing. I made a giant gate instead of a small door. But hey, it works, right? Whatever <laughs> works. <laughs> I'm not, yeah, no one can enter on the sides. You can only enter in the front. So that's good. Hey, wait the, what the heck? I'm gonna need a stairs for this little jumping point right here. How it actually works was there was a building type where you can toggle by pressing T when you have a wall or something. So yeah, you can choose what the structure would look like with a simple toggle like this. I was looking for the door and eventually I found it. Currently, what I hate about this experience is that I have a limited weight capacity and we need a lot of resource. So I needed to figure out how I could increase my weight capacity so I can get more resource before going home. So that was honestly a problem. And right now I'm crafting a bunch of stations to put on the base so we can craft like new gears and stuff. Honestly, I think this game wasn't made to be played solo, but since we're already here and we've started and we already reached this far, I'm gonna persist and continue on. I recently unlocked a recipe for a new wooden helmet, so I crafted myself one. I'm gonna also craft the armor set once I have enough materials. And now I'm gonna place my newly crafted stations at my base. I have a spinning wheel here which can craft us a bunch of stuff. And the very first thing we can craft right now is the linen. It's very important in making bandages and also making an armor set later on. So with some materials on hand, I crafted a bunch of linen. Also, I crafted a stairs, like I said. So we have an easier time going up our base. I expanded my base a little as I realized that we actually need a lot of space for these stations. Oh right, right. It takes a certain time to destroy specific parts of a base as you need to wait for the timer where you can actually delete something. And I don't like that. Also, you don't really get the materials back completely and that's what makes me sad. And if you notice the changes on my character, I'm currently wearing a level 11 armor set. Wooden armor set. It doesn't really look that different but... Kinda is noticeable as you notice the level 1 one we had earlier had many holes. Now we're like covered in wood. Also, I found a horse. I I'm not sure how I can capture this horse. But I tried my best to approach it but it was too fast for me. Goal right now was to hunt a bunch of crude leather or crude hide I mean and some meat. So I fought a bunch of foxes. I wasn't expecting that there were a lot of them. By a lot, I mean three. And I thought I was in trouble, but there was actually nothing to worry as we're dealing a lot of damage with our spear and our armor is actually shielding us from all those damage that the foxes did earlier in the game. We don't really take that much damage anymore, but still we should be careful. It might be lethal and we die. I also recently unlocked new items called the Bone Hammer and the Bone Axe, which I crafted. I also now have a Stone Sickle, which is pretty useful for gathering some flax and grass. No more clicking E to collect, but just a slashing the grass would work. I then went to a near river as I needed some clay. And it seems I think it's these rocks right here for sure. So I whacked it with my hammer. I crouched down because I always miss when I stand up. It's too low for me. <laughs> Sometimes I can't even hit it when I try hard enough. So anyways, we got a bunch of clay and sandstones and they were very heavy and I hate it. I need to manage my inventory weight now. So yeah, I crafted myself a bunch of chests so I can organize my items. I needed a bunch of them. I'm gonna organize them currently on wood, stone, and animal gains. Next up, finally, we had a very good station right now. I made myself a weapon bench. Now we can craft new weapons. Let's go. 
One of my goal here is the Bone Sword and the Bone Spear to improve our damage. Bone Sword, because I really like sword in games. And the Spear, not a fan, but the long range would be really nice too. So yeah, I started crafting myself the sword, the spear, and the bow. We'll be using them later on once it's done crafting. Surely enough, I can see a lot of improvements with our... <laughs> Surely enough, I can see a lot of improvements with our gears improving and our armors improving and our tools improving. We've been gathering more materials more and more as we level up our gears. Now we also have our hunting knife to collect more hide, more bones, and more meat from animals. It's a hassle dealing with small animals. Also, after farming and doing random things, I think that's how I got my honor. I became a baron from a commoner. We have an increase in 2.5% of our HP. That's pretty good, I guess. If you're wondering, I never showed you guys how crafting recipes and skills work in the game. But it's very complicated for me, so I basically just get everything. Because I can get everything, and I don't know why. So this is what the recipe bar looks like. And the skill is kind of similar, but not really. But yes, this is how it looks like. So I'm not going to be covering a lot of this area. I'm just going to tell you if I crafted the new stations or new armor. Let me show you what the sword fight looks like. So basically, attacking down is stabbing. And attacking up is slicing and dicing. Anyways, I hate how the foxes run when they're low in health. But our archery skills make up for it. Let's go. There are also boars in this game. And here's my first encounter with a boar. I dealt a headshot on it for sure. So now we're gonna fight it with our sword and shield. What I hate about bringing out the sword is you need to also press the shield to pick it out from your back. It's like a hassle of like clicking two hotkeys to bring it out. Oh yeah, as you can see, cool. I also have, uh, as you notice, it's a bone shield. It's a new shield. So yeah, we're starting to look and uh, feel like we're surviving here. We just need to encounter some humans to fight. Then we can actually say that we're playing an open world survival game that's about war. While exploring to gather resources, I found this level 22 horse. And I decided I'm gonna tame it and make it my horse. I wasn't honestly sure how this works. So I threw some hay at the horse to lure it down. And, well, it did get lured, but it ran away shortly after. So I need a new strategy for this. Honestly, it took me a while to be able to handle this horse. So I wait for it to calm down first, and I ran towards the hay I threw. As I lured it closer, I pressed E and rode the horse, clinging to its side until I finally rode it. So what we're waiting here is for the obedience meter to go full, so we can actually have this horse follow our commands as the anger meter go max we will go into a mini game where we have to click our mouse or something when the horse gets berserk we need to follow the controls or i think it will break loose but right now currently i was able to follow so it never broke loose no matter how angry it was at me and i managed to capture it and named it ferrari I gave Ferrari some basic armor for the horse and a good saddle. And look at our horse. He, isn't it? Doesn't he look pretty now? Our pretty Ferrari. Now we have a mode of transportation that's faster than running and walking. Yeah. And also Ferrari is able to carry our loots. I don't think they have any weight capacity as far as I know. Yeah, it's pretty neat. As I was looking for some copper ores, I had my first encounter with humans in this game. I didn't know that they weren't hostile unless provoked. <laughs> so I just engaged battle with them because I was too dumb to understand that they were not hostile. And a few boars joined us on this fight. It was pretty chaotic but the boars are actually helping us instead of being against us. So that was nice. So here's our epic battle. That is wonky. <laughs> oh my god, my HP. I, I have I don't have bandage yet. Oh lord, I'm dying, I'm dying. I am actually dying. I felt I slashed them. I slashed them again. 
Oh my god, he stabbed me. I might die. I might die. No, no. Believe. 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 Yes, thank you, Boar. The Boar killed him. But the Boar kills me. No, you die first. Yes. I emerge victorious from that fight because I'm obviously good at my sword. There are sometimes trouble riding the horse because sometimes you get stuck and like random animals try to kill you. So I'm so glad I escaped from that fear. <laughs> I'm almost dead as you can see. I don't think the horse dies along with you. I think only you die. I'm not sure. I found this field full of humans, so I'm kind of scared if they're hostile. So I just turned around and looked for somewhere else to go to. Honestly, it took me a while to realize that these uh, shiny looking rocks are the copper ores I was needing. So now I know how it looks. It was time to farm a bunch of them so we can get a new set of armor and weapons and tools. So yeah, I just explored around the area looking for rocks like this. I didn't know that there was actually a food or a herbal medicine you can take. So you can have a keen eyesight, which basically tells you where the copper ores are. But anyways, I did not know then. So I just, you know, manually look for them. As I explored even further, I found a village. I was kind of scared that they were hostile. So I didn't really enter it. I just, you know... Uh, gallop my horse around the perimeters and look for enemies. I I wanted to check their levels. But well, I got really lazy to go near them. They were kind of far. So anyways, I... Oh yeah, there's also a button to call the horse. You, see, you hear that whistle? That That's it. You call your horse over and the horse will go next to you. So after mining a bunch more copper, I decided to go home. I slapped in most of my copper ores to the furnace and then went on on another copper ore hunt once more. I believe I would need a lot of them before I can, you know, make stuff. After finally having enough materials, I made myself a tailoring bench. Now I had access to craft a bunch of new armors as you can see. We're just lacking in the materials now. I also made myself a construction bench. This is where we're gonna be crafting a bunch of new stations like the furnace and other stuff. All these stations required a lot of clay, sandstone, copper, you name it. It required a lot of materials. So I went on a gathering spree so I can craft them. I cry. This is why this game is a multiplayer. Because you'll be grinding a lot if you're playing solo like me. The only thing remaining right now was to gather stones. And for some reason, stones are really rare. It kept giving me rubble instead of stones. So I had to smash a bunch of rocks before I actually got enough stones to make a furnace. And finally, with enough stone, I made myself a furnace. I'm very happy about this. I'm so tired looking for stone. And also, I made myself a new weapon called a glaive. It's a two-handed weapon and it seems way better than a sword. And for some reason, I can't equip it with an axe. And I hate that. I tested it out with the boars I found while just lurking around looking for materials. And well, it actually has a lot of AoE range and also deals quite good amount of damage. It wasn't that hard to hit the boars as it had a wide range, especially its wide slash and horizontal slashes. It was actually one of my... It's gonna be a weapon of my choice for the entire game. It would be a glaive now. I like how massive the range is. And my furnace finally finished crafting at the construction bench. So I place it on my base and I'm gonna slap in all my copper ores I have. And then smelt them into copper ingots so we can craft new armor set. As usual, it needed some fuel. So I'm gonna fuel it with some grass. I have a bunch of them in my storage. The copper ores I collected wasn't enough. I actually needed a lot more to make more stations. The equipment itself didn't really require a bunch of copper ores. It's the stations that require a whole lot of resource. And I kinda hate how it required a lot. 
So yeah, I mined more copper ores, hoping I could collect enough to make new stations and new armors. I finally finished my new armor set. Look at me, looking like a legit warrior now. I have a full set of new heavy armor. I look really cool. The helmet is too much though. It's not even showing my face anymore. But I'm planning to make a light armor set as well. Because I don't really like the idea of heavy armor. I want to move fast. So light armor is for me. Alright, I also crafted myself a bronze sword. So I'll be using a bronze sword and shield for now. As I don't have a glaive yet. A glaive version of the bronze. I also place a lot of uh, guild skill points. I'm not sure why I can do this, but as you can see, my coins are draining. But at the very least, we have a bunch of new skills that increase our survivability and damage, I guess. So that was good. I have 10k coins left and I'm probably gonna use it all up to level a bunch of random stuff. So with new equipments on hand, I challenge the Vagrants once more and they pose no problem at all. I was now way tankier and stronger than ever. Oh my god, I got hit. Hmm. I think we have a shield. Oh my god, imagine this is just level 13 Vagrants. How do I recruit a Vagrant? I think I need an item for it. So I dealt with them pretty quickly. Compared to the last fight we had. This was the time I realized that the Vagrants aren't actually hostile. <laughs> it was just that I attacked them first. So I recruited this random Vagrant and called him a Vagrant. So checking on his equipments, he had better equipments than me. Not really better. It's lower tiered, but it had some stats and skills. Look at this thing. Look, it's a uh, formless armor. I don't know what the colors mean. It has an ultra arm or merset, ultra unyielding. He has really good stuff and I had common stuff. It's crazy. I should have recruited some vagrants earlier and took their item. Look, look at this spear. It had skills, which we don't have. I don't know how to do that. Something really interesting happened this past few days. I was just mining materials, but with the Vagrant on our side, we have a backpack mule. It's the same as the horse. They can carry items for us. But right now, I'm just having the Vagrant follow me around. I expanded my base once more, and excuse me, it's actually Vagrant. Next, I made myself a garden, I guess, a crude planter because I had a quest for it. And also, we would need this later on, actually. We would need a lot of barley because we would need some oils later on. So for the past few days, I just basically collected a bunch of resource because I swear the requirements for stations in this game is a lot, a lot and lots of resource. After my travels with my horse, I eventually discovered a copper mine full of hostile enemies guarding the mines, claiming it their own. So I gathered the coppers around the area first before actually engaging in a fight. They're not really that tough. They're just level 12 uh, rebels. There are also elite rebels. So that's the tough guys. All right, I forgot to mention, I made a copper shield. Look, as I engage in battle, I shield the first arrow. Everyone was alerted that I was already engaging a fight with this one robber here. <laughs> so now everyone's like eyeing me now. We're gonna we're gonna have to deal with a lot of them. We're just gonna kite them and kite them until they fall and die. I wish I had like a two-handed sword or something. That can That's okay. We're actually doing not doing bad. Just Slowly backing away while killing them. I feel no excitement on this fight, however. Because <laughs> I know all I need to do is kite them. It honestly took a while before I could end every mob earlier. So with just one lap, I've defeated all of them. And now I can claim my glorious loot they left behind. There were a bunch of money and copper ores they drop and also some meat and random items. So I'm pretty happy with the rewards here. But wait, there's more. That wasn't everyone actually. So with the two robbers remaining, I didn't think this would be a threat. I easily took care of them. Look at this guy. 
Just one of you. You have no more friends here. I'm gonna destroy you. There we go. After defeating all the robbers in the copper mine, I mined away until I'm full or my horse is full. So I'll be doing this for a very long time. Get every ore that's available here. After I was done, I slapped in all of my ores to my furnace. Look at all the ores I have. But let me just say, this is just small numbers. I need a lot more ingots than this on what you currently see. I need a lot more. I swear to god this game is so grindy playing solo. You really need multiplayer in this game. I expanded my little empire some more because I needed more places to put my new stations. And I also crafted, finally crafted myself the entire light armor set. Now we have less movement debuff, I believe. We can move faster now. Look, look, it's kind of faster, I think. I don't know. I'm, I'm maybe blind or I'm imagining things. But what I imagine is a light armor is fast movement speed. Next was I made this club. What it basically does is stun an enemy so we can subdue them to make them our ally once we torture them. So that was pretty neat. I had a quest to capture a rabbit. Just put it in their face so they get trapped. Look, running towards here, right? Yeah. <laughs> And after this one, I'll be needing to make a rabbit's den or something. And that requires a lot of materials once more. So we gotta grind for more materials. I also crafted myself a guild workstation. Because it's part of my quest. And I need to make a guild boundary marker. So yeah, there's that. I'm not sure what the marker does. But anyways, let's just do the quest. So we can learn about the game. After those shenanigans, I went back to the copper mine to mine uh, the coppers that were left behind, which I haven't mined yet. There were a lot. A lot, lot. But good thing we have our horse. The number one thing I hate right now is gathering stone. I don't know how to find stone. Stone is very rare and it takes me a lot of whacking on stones. They mostly gave me rubble instead of stones. So I hate it so much. I gotta go collect more stones. I had no choice. I then made myself a carpenter's bench so we can make a bunch of new stuff which we don't really need. Aside from the wooden planks that it gives us. And I also have the rabbits then. I need to place it just at this corner right here. Because why not? So what this den actually does is the rabbit will make us some crude hide. Some fine hide or animal fur. And other stuff I believe. So yeah it's kind of useful. So for the next days, I'll be gathering stone. I'm just gonna smash random rocks until it eventually gives me enough stone to craft a bunch of new stuff. I really need stones, a lot of them. So this is what I mean by the rabbits then is providing a lot of stuff. So thinking about it, I should really get more rabbits so you can produce me hides. So we don't need to hunt animals anymore. Except for the fact that you'll need to feed them and it's really expensive to make the trap. Because it requires copper ingots and I hate that. Having exhausted the copper mine, I just mined copper randomly around the mountains looking for them. That was the hard part because there's only two rocks per area. Or I don't know. I just saw like two at most. So that's what I did. I just kept looking for these. I then decided to raid this village with the pirate ship. Because I had a quest to get some skill tips book. And basically these pirates dropped them. So that's what I did. I challenged the pirates to battle. This pirate leader is level 20. He's pretty tanky. But we got this. Got you, pirate leader. He hurts, he hurts, he hurts, he hurts. Yeah, strike from above. Strike from side. Strike from the left. Strike from the right. Strike from the... Uh, whatever. What kind of strike it is. 
So these are the skill books I was talking about. They basically give you experience on depending on what its description is. The skill it will give you a skill point. Experience points. I spent a few more minutes in this area just killing a bunch of pirates I encounter and looting their skill books. If you see the or icon, it's because I consumed a medicine that gave me a uh, true sight buff, I guess. So those icons are basically the copper ores. It's really helpful to locate like special materials that we need to locate, like this ore. But I still need a bunch of stone. And with enough material, I finally made myself the guild boundary marker. I honestly didn't dig that deep into how this functioned. I had only one focus and which was to explore and upgrade my gears and do my quests. Since I didn't have any quests in particular for the boundary thingy, I didn't pay it any mind. I just went on my way. I also crafted myself a tannery station. We can now make ourselves some raw leather or thick leather, which was honestly helpful in making new armor sets. Or new gears or new stations there were still a lot of stations i haven't unlocked because the requirements on materials is crazy i'm gonna cry grinding all these materials but i did manage to craft myself a kiln and with this kiln we can make some brick and some flagstone which is needed to make a forge or other blacksmith area or something I also found myself a really good spot on getting fine leather, crude leather, animal fur, meat, bone, you name it. This area is full of boars. You just need to agree, I mean, trigger one and lure everything in one spot and kill everything in one go. <laughs> so I farmed this area for a bit until I had enough fine leather. I mean fine hide. So I can craft myself some bronze tools. I tried going into this stronghold, but as you can see, there were so many enemies. And this is where I realized a solo might not be a good idea. I mean, I could probably take them on if I had better equipments. So yeah, actually, I should give up for now and come back another day. As they slaughtered me like that. So I found another copper mine and I took on a bunch of mobs because why not? So let's kill them all, loot the copper ingots or the copper ores they have and start mining all the copper available in the area. Alright, I had a quest where I need to torture a warrior, an elite warrior. So I whip out my club and whack this guy to, well, until he was, he fainted or incapacitated. So wait a bit. A bit more hit, a few more hit, and there we go. So I carried him and hanged him on my torture device. I needed to wait until his obedience went 100%. It actually took a while, so I decided to mine some ores for now. So this was the point in the game where I realized I can knock someone down and loot their items. Because look at the shield, it has a skill. And it's an ultra level 30 quality shield. My brown shield is better, but this has a skill. And I'm very curious. So I'm taking this. Also, it seems I can further increase the amount of obedience. The bar goes up if I whack the one that's on the torture map. So the more I torture them, the more obedience they have. That sounds really bad. <laughs> that's how it works in the game. Oh yeah, I went back to mine more ores as I was waiting for the obedience bar to max up. The mining never stops! Well, after that session of mining, finally this guy decided to be my ally. I named him Colin. Because, why not? I made myself a fermenting barrel as I needed this for a quest, the crude wheat spirit. I'm gonna be needing a bunch of plants, so this was the time I realized I really need to make more gardens. The maximum amount of gardens you can make, I think, or I can make right now is about six pieces. Don't get me wrong, planting in this game is not that hard. You just put the seed in and it will grow on its own. But the hard part is cleaning the garden after it grows or harvesting it. 
So you need to whack these plants until it goes back to the soil or something as fertilizer. Or you just keep plowing until your soil level is 100%. So it takes a while. But I think it just takes a while because I don't have any skill on planting. No masteries or whatever. Because I read out that there's an increase in efficiency if I leveled some of the skills regarding planting. So I started harvesting some random wheat looking plants or random herbs, plants, whatever you call them. Because I was impatient. <laughs> I wanted to finish my quest about the crude wheat spirit and I couldn't find wheat anywhere. I went back to that castle because I remember they had a lot of plants. But it seems there was no wheat here. It's mostly grass. Oh wait, I got wheat. Let's go. Next, as I needed more, uh, I mean hides, animal furs, and uh, fine hides, I went back to the boar area, gathered a bunch of them, and killed them in one spot so I won't have a hard time harvesting everything. It's a pretty, uh, I guess, convenient process, because when you trigger one of the boar, all of them go to you. As for my rank, I am now a Noble Baron, getting me an additional 2.5% damage on swords, bows, and axes, I believe. I also made a new station at base. It's called a Salt Pot. It basically makes salt, I mean edible salt, from crude salt. Now we have salt. I also made a clay cook bench. We can make some random food here. Like a manto. I don't know what a manto is, but it's a manto. With the fine heights I have, I could craft myself some new tools now. Like the bronze hammer, the bronze axe, the bronze hunting knife, and the bronze sickle. The next day, I engage on another fight with some robbers stationing at a mining area. So I was curious, hoping this was an iron area. So I engage in battle with them. Slashing them with my sword as I guard myself with my shield with the skill shield bash. Basically, the shield bash knocks the target out, but the cooldown is really long, like 40 seconds or longer. I couldn't really feel the greatness of this. I think it's gonna be so great one on one where you want to stun an enemy down so you have an advantage of like hitting them a few times. So anyways, the fight wasn't really that hard as usual. I just kited them, hitting them and running away. Slowly going back and forth, back and forth until I knocked everyone down. After emerging victorious from that fight, I started mining some iron ores. This was actually an iron mine. Now I had access to a lot of iron ores. I also got a lot of iron ore and iron ingots from fighting all the robbers. They dropped quite a a few of them. So I was kind of lucky now that I have a lot of irons. But we need a lot. Like a lot, lot. As usual. And I also got myself a uh, level 30 quality or blue colored sickle. I'm pretty happy about this. It's a bronze sickle. I currently only have a common sickle. So I'm going to be using this. After going home, I decided to continue finishing my quest. So I made a bunch of flagstone as I need a bunch of brick. They, it's an upgrade of flagstone to brick. Then brick is going to be used to make a stone foundation, which we need four of them for a quest. So there's a lot of things I need to do to do my quest. <laughs> and I hate it. I just want to fight, get armor and weapons. That's, that's, that's what I want to do. But for now, let's just do our quest. So we learn more about the game. With enough iron ingots and enough other materials, I finally made myself a forge table. And as you can see, there are a lot of brand new armors and weapons. I'm very excited to make them. But I don't understand this quenching thing or quench. Quench to finish the product. So yeah, I paid it no mind for now. For now, I just wanted to make the molds. I learned my lesson from the previous fights I had and decided to make a higher level glaive. So that's what I made, a mold for the glaive. Because I really wanted a good AOE or wide attack weapon. Because we'll be dealing with a lot of mobs. So a two-handed sword or a glaive is very good. Alright, also I finished crafting the smithing table. Now we have the smithing table. I'm not sure how, how or what this does. I never really tried figuring it out for now. Because I was so focused on just getting weapons. 
and maybe steal some items from higher leveled mobs. But for now, we need the glaive. And honestly, I don't know how to complete this. I tried putting it in the smithing table, but nothing worked. It needs to be quenched. There was actually a station called the quenching pool. This is what we need. So I'm gonna go and make one. So gathering more resources. Here we go. Right, right. Let me tell you the importance of these barleys. They basically make vegetable oil. And vegetable oil is really useful for quenching. And also to make raw leather. I mean raw hide. Which is very useful to make the next armor sets we need. So I was pretty glad I planted a bunch of barley. I didn't really know what I planted. I just randomly used some seeds I had. But good thing it was barley. Now we can make a bunch of oil from the stone mill. Vegetable oil. Wait, soybean. Yeah, yeah, I gotta insert the soybean. While waiting for all the items to process, I did an intense planting session of hoeing my garden. Which took a long time because honestly, my hoeing efficiency is very bad because I only have like a stone hoe at the moment and my planting skill is zero. So with a fat and vegetable oil, I finally quenched my glaive. Now I have a cool looking two-handed weapon. A two-handed blade. Let's just call it a two-handed sword because it actually looks like a two-handed sword. As you can see, it's very big. I also crafted a bunch of new light armors and quenched them. And with the complete set, this is how we look. Look at how threatening we look now with our giant blade and dark costume. I don't know, the enemies will be scared. I have so many assassin vibes going on right now. We're gonna destroy a lot of enemies with this glaive. But well, nothing's more important than gathering stone because we need more crafting stations. So I went around and smashed some rocks for some stones. Also, I encountered new animal types, basically the wolves. This was my first encounter with the wolves. And testing out my glaive, my two-handed sword already leveled up. Um, <laughs> our first battle with the sword was is not really that great. I seem to miss the wolf. I think it's the the angle of my strike i should strike it either below or above horizontally not straight i mean vertically but not horizontally because it will just pass by the wolf so yeah i kept slashing the wolf again and again until i knocked it out cold and for the past few days i actually just did random stuff at base like crafting a bunch of new stuff and as you notice, my weight limit is beyond 6,000. I increased the capacity because I didn't want to worry about weight limits anymore. And I really hate the weight limits on games. I always love games that had like no weight limit. Nothing at all, just inventory slots. So anyways, I did a bunch of stuff with base, crafted some stone foundation, crafted some mining things. Anything that the main quest or the side quest asked me to do, I did it so i could finish some quests i raided another mine area that had like a level 29 to 30 enemies my two-handed sword or the glaive did like very good aoe and high damage on them i'm pretty happy about this weapon i'm just slashing them and backing away and just repeating the process until i killed everything so that was, a, this was a very good weapon, honestly. And at this point, I will just main this weapon for now. Because I really like it. I like how I can decide where to slash and hit a bunch of enemies. Anyways, I continued my quest regarding a mining shack. So I used my dowsing rod to locate an area with lots of ores, I believe. And once the dowsing rod stops moving or kept spinning, I think this was a good area. As you can see, the dowsing rod is spinning and spinning. So probably it's telling me that there's something below. So I use a shovel and dig. It says barren and dense and i still haven't figured out how to make this work i think i needed the mining pick and after swinging the mining pick i made a shaft and finally i can build the mining area here to complete the quest and there we go maybe i assign a warrior here to get some ores for us so basically it gets copper iron and salt it's pretty handy if autom it automatically does that for us as long as we have a worker I really should recruit more warriors to do more of our bidding so we don't need to farm these stuff. Next, if you notice, I have a flag. I actually crafted a flag thinking that it would boost my stats. But it was just actually for decoration. 
The description says it's to determine that one is an ally during war, like or something like that. So they can see that you have a flag, then it's probably you. Anyways, I massacred or killed a bunch of wolves for their hides and pelts, basically for their materials. I'm really enjoying my two-handed sword right now. It's so easy to destroy enemies. Anyways, one of my quests wanted me to collect some hold wood so I can craft another station. And these trees containing resin or those trees that had like different looking wood are the woods I need to farm. I basically just spend the day looking for wood and at the same time killing a bunch of mobs if I see them. Because, you know, I, I just enjoy swinging my big sword. For the next few days, I actually just went on a combat spree, visiting village from village, killing all the inhabitants. Because I was on a mad, I mean, going on a mad spree of just destroying enemies. I don't know, I just felt very strong with my sword. So I mobbed them together, slashed them, ran away, and do it again, rinse and repeat until everything dies and gets destroyed by my blade. So, like that, I just push, pull, push, pull, slash, slash, push, pull. Well, you get the gist. I don't know, there's just something about killing a group of mobs that's enjoyable. Like if you can see here and you slash them with a big sword, it's just so satisfying that most of your attacks hit. As you can see, I'm dealing massive amounts of mob damage. But sometimes there's one that parries my sword and I couldn't really push through my slices. For now, I'm leveling up my one-handed mastery. Because uh, I already maxed out my two-handed sword. <laughs> So one-handed mastery it is. I'm using a hand sword, a level 31 sword I believe. And it's doing pretty decent damage but I really miss my second two-handed sword. But anyways, let's just use a torch for light because it's already night time and use our hand sword. I encountered this village that were like level 30 and above. So I decided to steal their leader's armor. If you can see the wolf armor set. That's the plan. I'm gonna knock everyone down, kill them with my, you know, tactics of hit and run. And then I'm gonna steal the armors of these leaders. Honestly, it took a very long time to deal with all of them. I eventually just looted a bunch of them as I knocked them out. Because these, this robber head, this, I mean, this raider head, he's really tanky. As you can see, his HP is so high. I've been trying to hit this guy a bunch of times already. But I decided to just knock out his uh, like minions or allies so I can loot their stuff. They may contain like a very good items. So let me just uh, fast forward this fight until like he's very low. Oh my god, it actually took a very long time. Right now I'm using my club so I don't accidentally kill him with my sword. I really want to loot this guy ahead or the leader of a group of enemies probably would have a lot of good stuff. And I wasn't wrong. Oh. I've been hitting you for the past five freaking minutes. Just fall to your doom, you little punk. Let me loot your ears. There you go. Oh my god, he has epic armor epic armor legendary boots a legendary bow a legendary sword <laughs> okay he's crazy damn i was so happy with this outcome it was worth every minute of trying to kill this guy <laughs> Or I have yellow items, purple armor, and even a red boots. I'm not really sure what the color grading is, but red is always better than purple, right? So look at me now. I'm a bear with legendary sword and bow. Let's go. I needed to repair these stuff or else they might break one day. I stumbled upon an area where I found some rhinos. So I immediately tried out my new bow. <laughs> I hate this bow sometimes. I hate bows on this game sometimes. I aim correctly, but I don't know, man. It just wasn't hit. There's just something. Maybe because I was moving while I was targeting the rhino. But yeah, finally we got a headshot. Let's go. Another headshot. Another one. And we finish this with our... With our legendary sword. 
with no skills. <laughs> it's a legendary sword, but no skills. I call this legendary because it's yellow, but I'm not really sure if yellow is legendary. But anyways, we took care of the rhino. But there's more. Also, with my brand new sword, I took care of a bunch of uh, uh, enemies with it. The mobs. And it dealt, I guess, pretty decent damage, but I... I miss my two-handed sword. The wider range is much more desirable than this one-hand sword. Yeah, I, I like the two-hand sword more. But anyways, this was just a test of the sword. And the damage is not bad, actually. It's doing quite a lot of damage. I'm dying from these two guys that are elites. They're very strong. It was honestly fun until I met with an unfortunate accident. I died. And... When you die, I guess you lose durability and all the armors, the legendary armors, the epic, the red one, and my bow and sword got destroyed in the process. I'm so sad. I'm so sad. Where's my legendary? And I don't even have an extra weapon. So my plan is to craft a better club and go knock some random high level mob and get their weapons anyways i found a random camp full of uh, human enemies and i knocked them down to steal their stuff so i can have better gears again not really better gears but an upgrade gears so that was the thing i i got his uh crossbow and a hand sword i always wanted to try a crossbow so why not I was honestly looking for a two-handed sword. I tried knocking this guy down, but he just died. But he at least he dropped his glaive, which I was happy for. Now I have a ultra two-handed sword. I ventured some more and encountered these guys. And this one random dude has like a good-looking shield. So I decided to knock him down and steal the shield. <laughs> now I have a good shield. I wasn't using my two-handed sword yet because my current one-hand sword has that skill and I was really interested in having a skill on my sword. So yeah. Yeah, for the past few days, I had only combat in mind, no more crafting. Because if I wanted new equipment, I would just plunder higher leveled enemies to get their equipments. That's all I had in mind. I just want to slash my sword, shoot my bow. I did not notice that I actually looted an ultra ultra glaive with a skill. I was so happy I can finally try out a two-handed sword skill. So this was time to annihilate higher level enemies to try out my skill. Well, I decided to try it out on low level mobs first. These level 27 guys doesn't stand any chance against my blade. As usual, the two-handed sword is just so good against mobbing because I think that was why they're made for. So take a look at this skill. Once it's done with cooldown, it basically stabs and slices twice. Wham, wham. You see the red, the red attacks. Well, it's very dangerous and a risky move because it leaves you vulnerable because you can't cancel the animation. Or I don't know. I just don't know how to cancel it. But yeah, as I use my skill, I basically can't move my character the way I want. I'll have to wait for the skill to finish executing. So it's only better, I guess, on one on war or an occasion where you can kill an enemy for sure. Or if you can take some hits, that would be fine as well. And if you execute an enemy with a skill, I think it resets the cooldown. Because looking at it, we didn't have a cooldown when we execute the skill. It's pretty decent actually. I like it. Risky, but I like it. It, get, it deals like more DPS since having three fast slash. Stab slash slash, I mean. And they're dead. At this point of time, I was feeling brave. And I wanted to engage a one on one fight on a high level character. Basically, a level 47 character. Like as you see here. I'm gonna steal his items so I have a level 40 plus gears. So what I had on mind was just lure one and knock him down and steal all his goodies. So that was the plan. It was kind of hard to lure this guy because I keep missing my crossbow shot. And he keeps going back to the camp. But, oh, level 50. Come here, big boy. Let me steal your stuff. So I need to run away first because I alerted the other one. I don't think I can deal two high levels at once. But one-on-one -on -one melee combat, I should be able to handle it pretty easily. 
But he threw a knife at my face. And look, look, he has a two added sword that looks good. I'm gonna kill this guy and loot his stuff. This sword looks really nice. I'm gonna steal it. Perfect fight. I mean, perfect weather for a one on one fight. Don't just think so, Raider Leader. Okay, so he has the better gears than me. So how I'm winning this is through skill. Honestly, this fight drag on very long. So let me just cut to the low HP part. We're still good. One more hit. Okay, let's use our club now. It's too risky. No! Oh! He died! What? Oh, he dropped this. He dropped the sword though. How did he die? I used the club. I was honestly so shocked he died because I really wanted his armor set. I wanted to be a bear again. <laughs> Anyways, we got his weapon. It's far better than our current weapon. I'm happy with this. It's time to lure another one and loot his stuff. There was another elite here, the level 47 one. So it's time to kill that guy. Well, I pulled the wrong guy, but still, I can knock him down and get his stuff. It should be way better than my current armor. And as you can see, he had level 40 gears along with the sword and his armor. A way better defenses than our current armor. So yeah, I'm sorry, buddy. I'm going to get all of your stuff. Bam. So yeah, time for our main course. The level 47 guy. <laughs> I want all your gears. Come here, buddy. I'm waiting for you. Let's engage in mortal combat. Wait. 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 Come here. I don't want to alert all his other friends, but he's just going for the throwing knife, and I hate that. So yeah, show us your sword. Give me your armor set. Wow. And hopefully this time he wouldn't die, so we can get his armor. Is this a few more hits? A few more hits. Get stunned. Get stunned. Yes. Yes, he's alive. Oof, we got his armor set now. That's pretty good. We have a level 41 Ultra Hunter set. And look, we're a wolf now. Rawr. I mean... Ow. Honestly, at this point of the game, I didn't really care about my base that much anymore. I just went on and looked for tough opponents to fight. Currently, there's this samurai-looking dude, as you saw earlier. I'm gonna lure him away and fight him. It's an elite version of the other st guys around here. So let's lure him away. I just want his sword and his other gears and his hat. I mean everything he's wearing basically. It should be like level 51 plus gears. So as I hit him, he retaliated and trying to shoot me as well. I wasn't expecting his damage to be very high, but look at this. Come here, Samurai. Ouch, what the? Ah, look at my HP to go down. Oh, what the? Yeah, I want a melee fight, not a range fight. Can't fight this guy. Is he coming? Yeah, he's coming, he's coming, he's coming. No, that's not him. Ah. I mean, sure, sure. Let's fight the scrub. Loot his stuff and then kill the boss. So after dealing with this pirate, he had a better two-handed two-handed sword than us. It was a ultra level 51 two-handed sword. I'm very happy about this. I'm gonna change my sword to this one for sure. And also his other armor set. <laughs> I'm just looting everything, I swear. And let's do the finisher. Look at my character. Don't we look like a samurai now? Not a pirate, of course, but a samurai. Look at us with our level 51 sword. It was now time to challenge the boss again. I should put my shield up because I really hate when they use range weapon. They never miss with a range weapon. That's why I hate about this. They have like a ninja kunai or something. If he use a range weapon, I'm dead. It actually hurts. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. This throwing knife is so... Info. My HP drains so fast. Can't hit him. He has longer range than me. Which is kinda scary. 
As long as he doesn't go back to his throwing knife mode, we're fine again. Oh my god, fighting in the darks. So. I can still see him though. Level 60 pirate head. Oh. I want level ground. It's so hard to fight him like this. Their damage is so cute. <laughs> you deal 300 damage each hit. Oh my god, he one shot us. Ah, <laughs> what the heck? Well, it was time to give up on that guy and time to actually continue with our quest. That pirate guy was on a reality check. <laughs> I did not expect him to be that strong. So I tried fighting a different group of enemies. We had, we should have nothing to fear because we have a really high level weapon, a level 51 weapon and level 51 armor set. It should be easy for us to deal with these guys, but I swear to god their range attacks is so annoying. It's like their arrow homes on your face and the damage is very high. It's like we have no break from their damage at all. It's crazy. So after defeating this guy, maybe it was honestly time to... Oh, what the heck? Look at this bow. But yeah, it was honestly time to just focus on our quest and maybe craft craftable armors maybe their armor is way worse than the crafted armors maybe it was actually time to look for our quest items we need like uh, the brimstone so we can make steel brimstone plus iron ingot i believe would make steel honestly didn't know where to look for brimstone so you know we can always use our friend called google but well, for now, I enjoyed uh, the slaughter with our new equipments. These low-level scrubs doesn't know what's coming for them. Look at our damage. We're just killing them so easily with our two-handed sword. This was a level 51 two-handed sword. What can their defenses do? It was fun because I got bullied by the level 60 samurai. I'm kind of enjoying this now. I guess level 60 is the max. I'm not sure. I'm honestly not sure. Probably not, it's, but it's the highest level I encountered in the game. Also, I learned a bunch of advanced skill. Because currently, I thought the skill cap was 425. But now that we talked to this NPC, I can actually increase it further by getting some lesson from him. Which was neat. I'm happy for this. I can now break through higher levels. I'm honestly currently on a journey to locate for you know ores the black iron ores the brimstone a lot of various ores we haven't unlocked yet so i can proceed with my quest so i dealt with these turban yellow turban tribe guys or yellow turban gang it wasn't that hard as we had really good equipments right now level 50 plus but i guess i believe the armor isn't that good because they still penetrate my defenses i guess maybe it just shows it as high defense but for some reason I don't know, they're just dealing massive damage on me or just get hit. Just get good, I guess. I found yet another iron ore mine. So I mined a bunch of them before going home. And finally, after looking for so long, I finally found brimstone. It's actually these stones that had streaks of gold on them. So now we can make steel ingots. Let's go. We leveled up. Now we can make more new stations, more new armor, more new weapon, more new tool. This was great. So I gotta farm more of these brimstones. I also tried a shot on mobbing these level 40 guys. And yeah, as my HP was all very low already, I just knew that I had to be careful. And I can easily deal with them as long as I don't, you know, I don't screw up. <laughs> as long as I don't screw up and carefully slash them slowly. I mean, slowly lowering their numbers until nothing is left. So that was the goal here. After getting back home, I immediately started crafting some steel ingots. And it seems it required a higher level flame for it to work. But good thing the hardwood does the trick. So now we're just gonna wait for it to completely craft all the steel ingots. And we need to make a different crafting station next.
For the next few days, I just hold up in my base and made a new armor set. Basically, it's the steel armor set. <laughs> and this is what we look like with a complete set. It's a level 41 set. It looks pretty cool, decent, better than the armor we previously wore. But the armor we previously wore had more defense. But this looks cooler, so I'm gonna keep this. Our next goal now was to locate the black irons. As you can see on my quest, it's requiring me to make a 5 casting block iron padding and iron armor. Also to gather some black iron ores. So I believe this mine shaft should have it. So after dealing with this leader, I should freely be able to mine some. Well, not yet because there were still some robbers here. They were level 40 plus so it was kind of hard to deal with as they were very tanky. But we eventually took care of all of them. So it's time to gather resources once more. We now have black iron ores. Let's go. But before we could make these iron ores to ingots, we need a blast furnace. And we need about 80 steel ingots. Oh my god. <laughs> We need more steel ingots. Good thing we had some surplus from last round. So now I'm making the black ingots. And it needed more flame power than the hardwood can give. So I'm using a rare wood to fire up the flame right now. I had a bunch of ores gathered from the earlier adventure. So we should have enough to make a new armor set went back and gathered a bit more black irons as we needed a lot to make new stations and also uh, extra to make our other stuff we need like armor and swords. On day 100, I decided to go back to that castle or base that destroyed me when I first tried to raid this place. Now with my level 50, I mean level 51 sword and level 40 armor, the steel iron armor and the steel armor they were no match for me so i destroyed i tried to destroy everything inside just as revenge or actually the highlight or the end of our 100 day journey just to showcase the combat it's basically swing swing guard guard swing swing run swing heart hit hit run hit attack guard so yeah this is this is our 100 day adventures in myth of empire uh, let me show you the black iron set after this fight. Honestly, this place was huge. There were like so many soldiers. I let this guy flute the horn so they would gather every, every soldier in this vicinity. And as you can see, look at this mob right here. I mean, I could take them on, but some of them were using ranged weapons and ranged weapons most of them have like aimbot. I just can't run away from their range attacks. As you can see on my HP, I was already dying. I had to run away. But also I forgot to eat food. So I was my character was very hungry. So I had to run, retreat, and heal. I needed to run fast. I needed to heal or I might die, honestly. So yeah, this was the part where I realized, oh, I forgot him to eat. So I ate some food. So I lured them up one by one, took care of their elite colonels and took care of the scrubs. I eventually got tired of raiding this place because there was really nothing here. I couldn't find any treasure chests or something. I, I tried. I killed a bunch of colonels. I don't know what the the goal here was. Anyways, I just showed them my supremacy and power. So I killed a bunch of them. And it's, if, you, if you notice that guy behind, this guy, this was their leader. So even if he was just level 30, if you can check his gear out, it looks really tanky. And my damage doesn't really do that much. And his icon has like an armor below the number. So I'm pretty sure this guy has those legendary epic or red colored armor. I was gonna try to knock this guy down but... Well... I tried. But for some reason... For some reason he died. <laughs> I still got a epic bronze sickle though. But not everything he had. I was sad. I wanted this, all his loot. I wanted to see what he had. So this is the black iron armor set. It looks pretty cool. It looks very bulky, I guess. It's a heavy armor after all. But yeah, uh, thank you guys for watching our 100 day journey. I hope you enjoyed your stay here. I really do appreciate you guys for watching my videos. 
And yeah, don't forget to click that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Thank you, thank you. Bye now.